more important than welcoming me. Let's welcome the Holy Spirit. Good morning and welcome to Global Evangelistic Center. In your Bibles, Mark chapter 16, verse 15. And I'm reading this from the Amplified Version of the Bible. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Please be seated. Here we are this morning. On a very momentous occasion and phase in our ministry that 12 years ago started in the living room of my family home with a small group of dedicated people that were committed to praying for me as I would travel to, to, to different cities and churches, Ecuador, <laughs> and different countries as an evangelist ministering the word of God, and in planning and coordinating other major events, some on a national scale. But that group of intercessors stayed together, realizing the need for fervent prayer to undergird any effective ministry, and, and realizing that we had become a family of people, most of whom had no church. And that is how Global Evangelistic Center was born. Our ministry started in 2003, and the church started in May 2007. And now as we've grown to a new level and a new phase, of our ministry, we can truly exuberantly sing that we have come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord, trusting in his holy word. He never failed me yet. There are some very special people along the way <laughs> that we will never forget and to whom we say thank you. Please even extend that to my brother, Pastor Nebi and Zion. And this morning marks a special milestone for us, not just because of growth. Growth is evident, and, 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 and we thank God for it. Uh, and the new move to, to, to which we thank God. Cyprus Elementary for opening their doors to us. But this is also a milestone because we will now be officially ordaining, confirming, and consecrating our leadership team to move the mission forward and, and to best serve both our local and our global community because our ministry has a worldwide footprint. We are in every continent of the world. So this morning is, is special, but at the foundational heart of our ministry has always been Christ's apostolic mandate to his disciples after the miraculous power of his resurrection to go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation, to white men, to black men, to whatever shade you fall in between. You see, what makes this active directive so very relevant to us and to our time is the fact that it was given after the miraculous power of God brought the crucified body of Christ back from the dead in, in, in one of the greatest miracles of all time that, 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 that comforts and that assures us in our darkest hours of grief that God is able. As Romans 8 and 11 states that 
if the spirit of him who raised Yeshua, Jesus, from the dead lives in you, he who raised Christ, Jesus, Yeshua, from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit, Ruach HaKodesh, who lives in you. I need a reader. Sister Omi, get ready to read for me Ephesians chapter 1, verses 19 to 20. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 19 to 20. You see, the other very powerful part of this active directive being given uh, uh, after the sovereign power of God had gloriously, supernaturally resurrected Yeshua is that, that, that the same power that brought his lifeless body back to life and that turned our, our mourning into joy, that same power that is our confident expectation is our own glorious inheritance as God's people. Ephesians chapter 1 verses 19 to 20. I'm reading from the Amplified Version. Amen. And so that you will begin to know what the immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness <laughs> of his active spiritual power is in us who believe. These are in accordance with the working of his mighty strength. You, 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 you see, while strategic planning is a necessity for effective ministry, and, and we're going to be doing that uh, with the departmentalization of this ministry, while strategic planning is a necessity of effective ministry, no ministry can truly be effective without having the active working presence and power of the Holy Spirit in it. He still brings the dead back to life. He still chases demons. And he still heals. <laughs> Which he produced in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. Even from the time that this directive was first given, this was a multinational directive of significance beyond Jerusalem and even the Roman Empire, which most of the world was under at that time. A directive which we can now even appreciate with greater revelation because of our technological and transport evolution that now fulfills the end time prophecy of Daniel in his 12th chapter, verse 4, that, that says, But Daniel, keep this prophecy a secret. Seal it up that it will not be understood until the end times when travel and education shall be vastly increased. Now, the original word used for world that we are going into is cosmos, which has multiple definitions, some of which are an, an, an apt and harmonious arrangement or constitution or, or order or government, world affairs, the aggregate of things earthly, the Gentiles as contrasted to the Jews, or, uh, and the world, the, the, the universe. So, so, so we have geographical distinction, the mindset of individuals, which is the mental world, their culture, which takes in socio-political, and cosmos is also where we derive the word cosmos, C-O-S, M-O-S, the other one is K-O-S, M-O-S, from, and using the word cosmos rather than the, the word universe implies viewing the universe as a complex and orderly system or entity, the opposite of chaos. And what we, we, we do also know is that it was this chaos that God spoke to at the initiation of creation. Genesis chapter 1 verses 1 to 3. I'm reading this from the Amplified. In the beginning, 
God, Elohim, created by forming from nothing the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and void or a waste and emptiness and darkness was upon the face of the deep primeval ocean that covered the unformed earth. The spirit of God was moving, hovering, brooding over the face of the waters and God said, let there be light and there was light. Oh, God still says, let there be light in, in dark hours and in, 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 in challenging times. Now, 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 here we are today with, with the word cosmos and in our time, that word has yet still a more evolved significance as we consider that it is in these cosmos that our communication signal travels by, by, by tra transnational media corporations and that over three billion of Earth's 7.5 billion people are active social media users and globally more than 1.4 billion households now own at least one TV set and there are over 2,500 satellites in orbit around our sun. The word cosmos also has a more futuristic significance for the forward-thinking evangelist, because in this day and age, you've got to be forward-thinking. <laughs> As private enterprise, and in particular right in Washington, D.C. And, and California, are already developing space tourism, while still others formulate plans for space colonization, and, and, and they, 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 they say it's to preserve the, the planet's species, including humans, in the case of a man-made or natural disaster, and, and yet, still, there are others of these would-be space colonizers so fixated on the abundance of valuable resources on our asteroids that they would love to mine if they can figure out how to make it all lucrative, because resources have always been the main motivation behind huge investments in exploration since the days of Vasco da Gama, who by his discovery of the sea route to India became the father of global imperialism. Go <laughs> into all the world and preach the gospel. Let me get a little. Go into all the world and preach the gospel on the somewhat recent Pew Research Center's forum that I looked at. Uh, they found that, that uh, atheists and agnostics, agnostics basically believe that the existence of God is impossible to be known or proven. Atheist an agnostic scored better on a religious knowledge survey than, than white or black or Hispanic evangelical Protestants or mainline Protestants and Catholics. They scored better than us Christians, regardless of how close the scores were. If we claim to sincerely believe that, we sh that, 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 that the, the God that we serve is real, then we should definitely no more than these people that don't believe or, or, or are dedicated to skepticism. We must be able to defend our beliefs apart from the obvious answer of laziness, because most Christians are lazy when it comes to Bible study. Lifeway research found that more than half of Americans have read little or none of their Bible. Hebrews chapter 6, verses 1 to 3. You see, I believe that one of the major problems is the lopsided understanding of just what the Bible is and what it promises because there are many that, 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 that merely stop at it just being the revelation of Christ. Yes, this is good news, don't get me wrong. 
But repentance and salvation is only the beginning of revelation. Hebrews chapter 6 verses 1 to 3. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptisms and of laying on of hands and of resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. And this will we do if God permit. If we have come to that spiritual state to where we can grow. Well, you know, we thank God that we've been saved and delivered from the strongholds of our past. Then there is a greater level of spirituality that God wants us to rest in and to be confident of. And if we indeed have been called into front line ministry, God wants us to fully understand and to be activated in that realm. I'm not raising up no, I'm not raising up no lazy Christians that don't know the word. Matthew chapter 11 verses 4 to 6. Jesus answered, go and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight and the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed by healing and the deaf hear. The dead are raised and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed, joyful, favored by God is he who does not take offense at me. Accepting me as the Messiah. And trusting confidently in my message of salvation. There are seven key things that I want my ministers to always remember. Seven key reasons that people take offense at our presentation of Jesus Christ. Yeshua HaMasiah. Number one. Gospel manipulation. Gospel manipulation. Manipulation. That's when we have people endorsing evil. If you're wrong, I'm going to tell you you're wrong, brother, sister. I'm not going to endorse evil or illegitimate viewpoints to manipulate you. Do not look to me to endorse you when you're wrong. When you're wrong, you're wrong. Number two, gospel exploitation. Gospel exploitation. That's when you cherry pick scripture. I wish the Bible was a multiple choice book. Brother D, I'd take all the verses on fasting out. But, <laughs> but that's when you cherry pick scripture. And unfortunately, some people do it for financial gain. Where instead of teaching on the principles of increase, they teach you everything on how you should give. You should give me because. Gospel exploitation. Number three. Gospel dilution. Gospel dilution. And see the traditional church for the longest time. I'm not knocking anyone. But I'm telling you I travel and I've traveled to many different churches in many different cities. And it's always amazing to see when the power of God comes in a place. It's been like it's a desert and the Holy Spirit comes in a dry and thirsty land. Gospel dilution presents a depowered message. You see, the same God that walked on water, the same God that, that, that laid hands on the sick, and they recovered the same God that stood up against principalities and powers. The same God of yesterday is the God of today and he'll still be the God of tomorrow. Don't look to me to preach you happy. Uh, that, that, that's the easy way. Four points to happy land and, and then everybody goes home and nobody's insulted. I'm going to give you the unadulterated word of God. Because as long as we've got demons, as long as we've got sickness, as long as we've got generational curses, 
We need a God that, that's as real today as he was yesterday. The fourth reason. Painful rebuke. Painful rebuke. You see, you got two sets of people. You got a set of people that are slaves to sin. They just love sinning. Uh, you know, we sing, I was sinking deep in sin. They sing, they sing I was sinking deep in sin. Wee! Because they enjoy sinning. And when you bring the word of God, they will take offense. See, we can't, we, 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 if, if we speak in truth, then we leave it to God. We, we leave it to God to sort it out. Say, hey, brother, I just got to drop this right here. And you do with it whatever you want. We must not, in the sake and for the sake of political correctness, ever get to a point where we will not bring a rebuke. And then you got, <laughs> you got some, some people that, that, that are afraid. They, 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 they're thin-skinned. And the slightest rebuke you bring, they... You'll act like, they'll act like you stuck him up in a gun. Grow up! I almost said grow the hell up. <laughs> but, but, but it's the, let me justify it. But it's, it's the hell that keeps you from growing up. <laughs> because you got demons that, 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 that lay hold on your life and, and won't let you go. And so you never grow up because you do not want to get delivered because the stronghold of Satan keeps you a slave and captive, so ca pastor did not curse this morning by telling you, go the hell up. See, see, there's a difference, hear me well, between condemnation and correction. The Holy Spirit deals with conviction. So if I tell you something, or if our leaders tell you something, then it's said in love, and you receive it in love, because a charge to keep, we have a God to glorify, a never dying soul to save, to fit it for the sky. Th th then there is the other one. And a lot of people suffer under this. Disappointment with God. Disappointment with God. And you know where disappointment comes? False expectations. Instead of properly reading the word of God, they build up this mindset of what this nice father is and, and how God is just, you know, you get saved and then everything is just so happy. And false expectations. If everything was going to be good and happy and hunky-dory, then Israel would be sitting comfortably in Zion. God gives you something. You're going to have to fight for it. False expectation brings disappointment. And the sixth one, this one I'll probably get in trouble with, with some out there. Distortion. Distortion. And you see, we have allowed worldliness to creep into the church and pagan practices to become established as a culture that looks more like Babylon than it does our Judeo-Christianity. There are a lot of people out there that look at us enjoying pagan practices and say this is a distortion of God's truth. Faulty testimonials. You see, the Bible says, let your light so shine that others may see the glory of God in you. But if, if you got a bunch of darkness in you, you ain't got no light. You got the talk. Bless Jesus. You got the talk. I was shocked. The first time I had my Bible stolen was at a Christian college. The first. <laughs> I couldn't believe that, Brother Day. I said, I'm at a Christian university. I'm just going to leave my Bible right here while I go and get lunch. I came back, and for the longest time, I said, no, it's, it's, no I must have put this in s someplace else. I, <laughs> I, I tell you, I, c I could not. It, I, I, and then it hit me. 
your Bible has been stolen. I don't know how you're going to get blessed with stolen stuff. And then you got another set of people. I experienced this before. And smoking this cigarette and talking about God bless you. Bless you. I, first time someone did that to me, I, I said, well, you know, I, it's not for me to judge, but, you know, um, your body is the temple of God, <laughs> you know, and, and you can't be doing what you want to do and be talking about God. I've sat across the table from, I've sat across the table from someone that was very happy, and they proceeded to tell me that God is a God of blessing, and I'm saying, wait a second now. This God is a God of blessing, but they obviously have a lifestyle that the Bible is pretty clear about that, you know, they probably need to fix before they... Ah, anyway. Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Now, this is where I'm going to end this morning as we go into the next part of our service. In that same Matthew 11, There are seven things in there. Matthew 11, verse 4 to 6. Seven things that as I pray for you this morning, you need to pray for. One, it says, the blind receive their sight. Now, I can tell you, I have, God still does miraculous things. And I've witnessed laying hands on, on, on someone that was blind and they received their sight. But this is talking at a different level. This is talking about revelation. Because there are many people out there that are blind to the word of God. And in this day and age, you're going to need to be flowing in a greater revelation of God. And of his power and of his mysteries. If you're going to to, to be effective in the kingdom for today. You've got to be flowing with revelation. Not what someone said. Some places... See, I can put this. Some places, they send down a decree and they tell you what to to read. (laughs) I like to read the word for myself. Because when you get lost in the word, you lose track of the time. Number two. uh, The lame walk. This is talking about traumatized mental impairment. There are some people out there. That you, yeah, it's good to have strategies and stuff. But you, that you are going to have to lay hands on. And you're going to have to speak to their spiritual being. You're going to have to speak healing to scars of the past and of memories. There are some people that are lame because they're traumatized. They've been the victim of whatever. And they've become traumatized and they cannot move forward. So you've got to be flowing in the Holy Spirit. Number three, number three. Healing itself. God heals in a wonderful diversity of ways. I've had people ask me, uh, if I've been healed, can I go and check it out with the doctor? Yes, the healing of God can stand up to any test of medicine. God heals in a wonderful diversity of ways, whether it's allopathic, just traditional medicine, Luke was a physician, whether it's orthomolecular or, or, or whether it's f- f- watching what you eat because you can't be eating junk and saying, I don't know why I'm gaining weight. You, you got to add common sense with the word of God. Some people, they are so flaky. Uh, and number f- f- four, the leper is a message on ostracization. Some people have been rejected. And you've got to be willing to go up into the ghetto. Some of the miracles of God heal in some of the damnedest places. And I say damn, I mean they've been damned by society. But if you go in there, the same God that operates in your wonderful stained glass cathedrals, the same God in there, God, God doesn't have a passport that says, I'm sorry, I cannot go to the ghetto. The same God that operates in stained glass windows operates in some of the places that are the darkest and that need to see the miraculous power and light of God. (coughs) 
remember when we went to, I'm not insulting this area, to McLaren Circle and the lady that was miraculously healed at our outreach? God wants you to be so empowered that you will take his power to the people that have been ostracized and that people would consider to be the rejects. And then the other one, the other one, the deaf. It's significant, five out of seven, of truth received. There are some people that are going to be deaf. But if you speak the right word, this is not in the natural. You speak the right word, they will hear what you have to say. So you need God to empower you with wisdom. You've got to speak the right word. And the dead, it's about spiritual revival. Because revival is coming. Amen. I'm going to be a part. Because <laughs> revival is breaking out in different places. But revival begins in you. Revival begins in you. The fire and the light of God has got to bring your dead spirit back to life. And that can only happen with someone. I can't give you what I don't have. The, 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 the final point about the poor. God wants his people financially empowered. God wants his people financially empowered. He wants curses that are generational broken. And he wants his people empowered. Now this morning we move into the ordination and consecration of deacons. There's an army and of our ministers that I will be confirming in office. Greg and Nikki. There's an army. Mama and Papa V. Forgive me, I, I call these people Mama and Papa V. Uh, Clenny, Sister Clenny and Brother Vincent of Angus Army. And Doc, come on up here. And then we're going to pray for our different um, departments. Please come to the front.